we're back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, and we're at Goodman's Garage, and we're talking about a movie that is really a classic, all quiet on the Western Front. This is really interesting with Steve Goodman. We'll be right back. Steve, Steve Goodman, thank you for joining us. This is a very important movie. Uh, you've done a lot of examination of this movie and the two predecessors of this movie and the book, right? Wow. This is, this is like a college course, at least three points, maybe six. So um, did you dive into it the way I think you did? Well, as to the book, that was a long time ago that I, I read it. And I, uh, I'll admit that if we, just, if we had to do a review on as to the book only, that this might be a, a short, much shorter discussion. <laughs> but the movie is really, I mean, it's fascinating the the, the differences in the in the movies. Um, they they're they're basically telling the same story, and it's it's an anti-war story, but one is is much more clear about that fact than the than the other two, and that's really the original film. Um, it's 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 it was kind of fascinating to to see how how they differ. Well, I was fascinated with the write-up in the Smithsonian. Um, so this this film played the the book came out um, by uh, Eric uh, Maria Remarque, who Remark, nineteen twenty nine, and it was an instant bestseller. And it's still right. a good it's still a good book. People have the nicest things to say about it. It was a classic. Now, he wrote two sequels, by the way, to that book and made two movies, but they're not as, as famous as All Quiet on the Western Front, which was the name of the movie. And, and just to clarify, the Western Front is the German Western Front. They were pushing west. So this is from the you know, geographical vantage point of, of the German army in World War I uh, in 1917, etc., so um, what I found interesting in the Smithsonian write-up and in other write-ups, too, is this, this movie has itself, it has historical context. Because uh, after it came out, it was played in Germany. Uh, I guess that was in December of 1930. And Hitler and Goebbels didn't like the movie because it was, not, it was, it was an American movie and it was made from the American point of view, not the German point of view. And it it was, as you say, it was an anti-war movie. And Hitler, you know, didn't want to have an anti-war movie. He wanted to have a little war. Obviously, that, you know, that came to pass a few years later. Uh, and Goebbels was his propaganda guy. So when it played uh, in early December in Germany, uh, they, uh, they sabotaged it. They, they used uh, sneezing powder, Goebbels did, uh, to make people in the audience sneeze. Um, they had shills there calling out anti-Semitic remarks about the movie, saying it was a Jewish movie. And the, and the audience responded and, you know, cat called the same anti-Semitic remarks. Um, they, um, they put white mice, white mice on the floor of the movie theater. And people were, you know, uh, horrified with the white mice running around. And they did all kinds of things to scuttle the movie. And uh, they effectively used it as Nazi propaganda. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite something when you read the story of how this uh, de debuted in, in Germany. Uh, uh, it's sad that Hitler used it. And what's interesting, by the way, is that the book was very popular in Germany. It was the movie that Hitler attacked and that Goebbels attacked. And it was outlawed. In fact, how about this one, Steve? Later on, it was a crime to possess the book. You were required to turn your copy of All, we All Quiet on the Western Front into the Gestapo. Later oh, in I hadn't Germany. heard that. And if you didn't do that, they would come and arrest you. This is part of that same mentality where they were burning, Goebbels was burning books, right? Right. In the city square uh, and so forth. Um, so uh, it was a crime, a serious crime 
to even possess this book later on. So it, it took on a, a historical meaning for sure. Meanwhile, the you know the, the critics who reviewed this movie, the 1930 version of the movie, even today feel that it was the best of the three um, movies that were made about this book. Certainly, if you're from the political standpoint of of the the underlying theory of, of war is futile and doing war is 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 not a productive use of humankind. Um, the 1930 version is is by far and away getting that message across. The um the the war scenes in, in the current version are, are are really up up to Sergeant Ryan's standard. I mean the battle scenes and so forth are uh the cinematography is is of extremely high quality. Um, I don't think they had the, the the camera equipment to 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 do what the the current version did in, back in 1930. So you get some of the traffic back and the forth, and the fact that people basically, for the the length of the World War II, um, in most cases, the, the the troops really were were in the same position at the end of the war. Then, then were, then were, excuse me. Then where they were right at the beginning of the war, um, you you don't have any really advancement, but you have this mass amount of, of killing that that went on. Um, that trench warfare and 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 running from one trench to another is just suicide missions, um, and that comes across in the current version, but the the the, the 1930 version really has a storyline. More in terms of the back, a little more in terms of what was happening back in the German c- c- community itself, where where they could thought right to the very end that it was a winnable war, and they were going to march on Paris, and I mean that never was to be, and and it never was. It, it's just um, an incredible difference in the whole ad- attitude that that's being shown. Yeah, one one element in um, you know was the propaganda around the movie. Um, even while World War One was happening, the, the the Germans in Germany um, believed that they would win. They Absolutely, they, as, just as you say, they would march on Paris. But in fact, that was, it was not so easy because French warfare was really a a, a man killer. Uh, so many people died. I think the number of people who who died in World War One. In, in only three years was something along the lines of 27, make that 37 million people. That was a substantial percentage of the whole population of Europe. Uh, yes, it was. We, we don't know because the history of war is, is told through the survivors. Uh, those who died are not in a position to tell us. The one interesting thing about the 1930 movie is that a lot of the people in the movie were in fact World War I veterans. And they were wearing uh, army surplus outfits. They were you know, using army surplus equipment in the movie. So it was very authentic. And they understood what it meant to be involved in trench warfare. Uh, so you, you, and the, the movie has been you know, uh, uh, complimented for the um, the emotional accuracy, uh, largely because the people in the movie were the people in the trenches, the same people. Yeah, and it, and it really focused on four individuals, um, all of which died during the course of the, of the, of the movie. Um, and that's that's what the book did too. I mean, that there there really is no no nobody who really survives who you who you, you get to know in, in the movie. Um, What's interesting, the the uh, last one, Paul, dies a little bit differently in, in all three versions of the movie. It's it's all on the last day, at the last hour, um, but they 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 did not um, do it exactly in 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 the in the same way, um, and I quite frankly don't remember <laughs> what the book did in terms of. Which which version was, if any of them, directly followed from from the book? 
Well, I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you what was there originally. Um, Paul Bauler uh, was his last name, German name. Yes. Um, he was the most um, you know, prominent character in the movie yes. and the and the book. Um, he, he's alone. All his uh, all his uh, friends have been killed, and it just, this, of course, really bothers him. And, and she's a butterfly, a butterfly on a battlefield where so many people. So the 1930 died. version was the, the book version. Yes, and this was a little bit it. different in the in in the in, in the current version, um, and that there's no butterfly scene in the current right. version. Right. Right. The and, the and there's a little bit different um, in in the in the seventies version. I think it, it it's a little bit closer to the current version. So tell the people what the butterfly ending was. Well, he's sitting there. He literally he's looking out, and 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 suddenly there's there's a, a an actual plant, and and the butterfly is on the plant, and he he's reaching out to the butterfly, and then there's a sharpshooter from from the, the western forces and they actually he gets he gets killed uh by by the sharpshooter and at that point the armistice had already been been signed but there was it was delayed in terms of the of the start and and that's one of the more interesting things about the current version in in terms of the fact that it emphasized the fact that even though the war was was the, the armistice had been signed they, right to the very end, the, the the fertility of the killing just kept going on and on and on. Well, the um, um, I saw the the 2022 version, which is um, really interesting because there were parts of it at the end which were not in the earlier when in the book or the earlier versions, and uh, two of them I would mention to you. Uh, one is the negotiations for the armistice. We all knew that was conducted in a railway car, right? And uh, later on, Hitler, you know, criticized those those discussions. Um, and of course, the people in Germany knew about how these discussions went, and that was a um, so aggravating to them. So they made they be, they were very angry about what happened in the railway car. And you see the railway car in the most recent version, the twenty twenty two. You have, uh, I think, it was Marshal Foch, was it, on the French side? Yes. And you had a kind of a, I guess he was a, a public official of some kind, a, pol a politician on the German side, and the German guy is uh, is at the moral high ground. Uh, he is saying, "Look, yeah. we have to stop killing here. Uh, let's do an armistice right now." And Foch says, "No, I have my conditions. You can't just, uh, you know, after this war and all these people died." You can't just come here and tell me that you want to surrender. You have to accept my conditions. And I don't remember what the conditions were, or even if they well, discussed them in the movie. But They didn't discuss it in the movie. Yeah, so, the, yeah. so what happens is... That would uh, be a different movie, really. <laughs> it would be. Yeah. But what, what happens is the conditions were impossible for the German guy. He didn't. I guess he didn't have authority to agree to those conditions. And so it held up the, the armistice. Um, and the French were being completely unreasonable. And now, now, of course, we have to take this into account. Of, the first movie was made, you know, in the U.S., 1930. The, the second movie was made in the U.S., 1979, which wasn't as good as either of the other two, in my opinion. Well, that's clearly the, yeah, it, it, it's not a, you, you could skip that movie. Yeah, you could, you could. But in the, yeah. the, the one that was made last year, now that was made, uh, in Germany, by right. um, from the German point of view, um, that doesn't mean it's less powerful. In many ways, it's more powerful, um, and um, you have to look through the lens of you know the the German, the German soldier. And so, um, in this railway car, it seems to me that the um, they portray the French as really being unreasonable. I mean, here we have the possibility of closing down this this. This killing machine, and people both dying on both sides, and and uh, the French guy doesn't want to do that. But the other incident, which has to be discussed here, is the German general, yes, uh, who doesn't, who believes that Germany has not 
um, not not realize the glory. And he hears about the armistice, which is not effective immediately. It's a couple of hours away. And he calls all his troops, thousands of them, into a, a square on the German side of the line, the lines. And he tells them that Germany has to realize its, uh, you know, its honor. It has to go out and kill some more French troops. And he wants them all to go out there. But, but he tells them that the armistice will be effective at whatever, 12 noon. Right. They have to go out right now at 11 o'clock. Um, and, they, and they have to kill French right now. And there are some people in the German army who say, are you kidding me? You want us to go to war when you know that at 12 noon there is no war? Um, we, we settled this. We have an armistice. You want us to go and fight and kill some more people? <clears throat> and he says, look, you'll either go or I'll shoot you. And there are some of these German troops who don't want to go. And so this general, boy, this is really bad. He, he calls some of his special troops and they shoot the German troops who don't want to go out and continue the war. That is a remarkable scene. Remarkable. Yeah, and you have a similar thing going on right now in, in Ukraine. I don't know if you saw the news news clip, but in terms of some of the Russian soldiers uh, are, who are being forced to, to, to go in, and those uh, that are, are not really willing are, are actually being, being shot in front of the new, the new troops to, to make sure that they actually go fight. So um, a lot has happened, but a lot has not been learned despite the uh, uh, the obvious message that is being conveyed in terms of war, just, as I said, being futile. Um, yeah, this thing about insubordination also appeared in a, in a movie called um, The Combatant, which was the, the French, French women in the war. And it was uh, about uh, the, you know, the battleground at the Vosges Mountains, which are in the southeast of France on the German border there. And um, the same thing was happening. If you, uh, if, if you were resistant, uh, if you demonstrated a, um, a, a lack of willingness to listen to your senior officer, um, they would shoot you dead right there. And this, of course, motivated all the troops. And we, we forget this. I mean, our view, the American view, maybe the, the view in the world today um, is that, no, no, this never happened. It did happen. And oh, if yes. you were in World War One, and you were in some way, uh, you know, if, if you fail to follow orders, insubordinate in any way, they shoot you right there, kill you right there. And so the rest of the troops would stand around and say, gee, I think we got to listen to them, because if we don't listen to them, everybody, you know, we'll all get shot. That's what happened with the general in the square in the movie. <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah. And then the movie goes on to, 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 to see them do one more run from from the trench out in the open field and that that was just uh it was a suicide it's 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 uh um but that's why i kind of prefer the the 1930 version because it was getting the same message across with with without all the the killing being 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 all the killing occurring one of the interesting, though, those scenes that's in both the 1930 version and the current version was when Paul did the killing of, of the one French soldier and, and then had regrets about having stabbed the, the fellow. And, and, and then that whole sequence, um, it was, those were powerful scenes in both the original movie and in the current movie. Oh, you bet. Um... And that was, gee, I tell you, the, the, in the current movie, that was pretty powerful because um, he stabbed him many times. He kept stabbing him, and you really wondered whether the guy would survive. And he was in terrible shape. He'd been stabbed in his torso, his chest, and his neck, and uh, he was dying. And yeah, that's they kept the him alive got... more in the current movie longer than they did in the 1930 movie. Mm -hmm. um, but it it both 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 scenes both actors, both who played Paul, just to simply did a superb job, especially in 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 that in that sequence. I mean, it's one thing just to have a gun and you're just shooting out out in, in into into space, not knowing if you're going to hit something or not. It's another thing to to be one on one 
you know, on a personal level with with the with the knife. Yeah, and, and that point was that point was really really made very clear in both movies. He apologizes. We call it yes, very he does. powerful for that reason. The man's dying or about about to die, and he apologizes to him. Very emotional scene, a very powerful statement, you know, in support of this whole anti-war thing. And you know what? I, I don't know if you remember, but uh, in Saving Private Ryan, uh, Spielberg, the Spielberg statement on the, you know, on the yeah. war. Uh, he, there's, there's a, a German soldier and an American soldier in a building, and they're, they're having a life and death fight. Uh, and the German soldier prevails. And he, again, with a knife, he stabs the American soldier, and the American soldier is dying. And the German soldier, it, he holds him, he cradles him, um, as if, you know, he's sorry, as if he loves him. It's a statement of humanity between, you know, the, these warring soldiers. And, uh, you know, it's the same thing in the sense that it's up close, it's personal. He's, right. touch, he's touching, holding. He's embracing him in his moment of death. And it's the same thing in that spectacular scene in All Quiet on the Western Front. Yes, it is. It is. It, it is one of the more powerful scenes in the whole movie. Also, in the, in the current version, the, um, the, the score, the musical score, is, is uh, of extremely high quality. I mean, you could tell exactly what where the movie was was going just by listening to to the movie but to listen to the to the to the sound uh the score I mean, it's, it's nominated for nine oscars and one of them is the musical score and uh i mean i haven't seen the other movies that, that were nominated but this one really was was powerful in terms of c connecting up the, the music to what was happening on 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 the, on, on the screen Interesting that um, in the first one, in the 1930s one, um, the, I forget his name exactly, it was something like Milestone, was the filmmaker. And um, he put a certain kind of music on that 1930s version, and they changed it. They, yes. they, they redid the movie, and it was very controversial. They wouldn't listen to him. Um, but finally, after some years... Um, they changed the score back to the score, the original score in that movie. And you're right. Um, the score in a movie like this is really important. You know, it's, uh, it's an emotional thing, and it defines the action. Yes, it is. Um, it, it, there's, there's so many things that you could talk about in terms of the current film, and just in terms of uh, how it relates to what, what's going on in 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 Ukraine, and and the the fighting, and um, and then the fact that um, you you just don't have a, a learning experience going on, um, that you got people in the making decisions that are not on the front line, and are, are not the ones that that are being being killed. Um, and the uh, what's also interesting, there's only in the current version, just a, 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 a you know a couple of remarks about the fact that the the Americans were were just coming in. At that at that point, I think both the French and the and the Germans were were so tired. The, the Americans had come in on the French side; you'd have had the same result. Um, but it, I mean, if you come in on the German side, I mean, the Germans would have won. Just because they were fresh troops, both these 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 uh, countries had really had destroyed their their own their own population on, on a very feudal war. Um, and uh, Germany was uh, kind of ahead in some ways. It, it had uh, uh, bigger supplies of poison gas. Um, its uh, artillery was more advanced than the French. Um, uh, I think it had it had planes too, when the French did not necessarily have planes. So you know, Germany had some advantages, and th as you said, the trenches stayed that static, stationary for years. They didn't move, you know, but no, foot. they didn't. And and they, and they were a tremendous investment of labor to to dig them and build them and 
fortify them. The bottom line, though, is they were killing Pitts because, you, you know, uh, there was one scene in the 2022 movie where the, there's a tank coming on top of the trench and the sides of the trench are falling in on the men who are in the trench. I mean, right. Terribly bloody, brutal experience. By the way, I want to mention one other thing. In the 1930s movie, the character Cat, who ultimately dies, they all die, um, has a moment with his friends where he has uh, makes this really profound statement. He says, if these, if these politicians and generals really want us to go to war and kill each other, why don't we put them all in a box and have them fight it out without us? And whoever wins, yeah. wins. <laughs> right, right, right. That's what I was saying. The, 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 the 30 version is, is, is much more blunt of, about the attitude. Um, the, it, it's a little more subtle in terms of the, the current version. Um, one, one, thing, that, one thing is clear, though, from both versions. You, as the viewer, uh, you, you, you tend to associate and sympathize with these poor guys on the ground who are probably going to get killed. Oh, and, absolutely. You know, the, the stats were so bad. If you went into this war, you know, however optimistic you were, the chances were you were going to get killed or, or, or at, me- at best maimed. <clears throat> and, and in both movies, um, my, my experience anyway was, my God, I wouldn't want to be there. This is hell. Um, not only for me, but for my friends. And in fact, there was this incredible uh, part of the 2022 movie where he says, I miss my comrades. I miss my buddies. Um, And he's torn. He's um, so upset about that. And you realize that they form these bonds and then they're torn apart. And that's the last thing they have is their friends in in the trenches. But you right. know, don't want to be there. This is the most awful experience imaginable. And that's what both of these versions of the movie um, tell us. Uh, yeah, in I, both films, you really have the just how, how bad it was in the trench for the soldiers. I mean, all the rain, all the water that's down there. Um, I mean, you could dis- die of disease separate from the bullets. Um, it, it, it's just, uh, it's nasty, very nasty. But, so, but they're both worthwhile to see. Both were worthwhile to see. Both uh, leave you, it, it lives in you, you know, yes. you keep thinking about it afterward and you, and you, uh, you, you say to yourself, gee, I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was like that. Uh, for both sides. Both for, sides. Both the Germans and the French. And indeed, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of the Barbara Tuckman book called, uh, what was it? Um, the Guns of August. The Guns oh, of August. Oh, right. Where she tries to, this is Columbia history professor. She tries to make you understand how this war, World War I, got started. Um, it's very hard because they were all, they, they were all uh, spending their time completely invested in making war plans. And the war plans were like a chess game. And if this happens, then this happens. And you have these alliances and agreements and defense arrangements. So, you know, the killing of uh, the Archduke of Serbia was really not too consequential, but it, it triggered all yes, kinds sir. of other moves. And before you know it, all of Europe is in a conflagration and they don't realize, they don't know why. And then they're sending their best and brightest by the tens of millions into the meat grinder uh, and being killed. I mean, it was so stupid. Um, that's the story of World War I. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the movies get that point across. So they do. Yeah. So there's a lot to be said about this. I mean, in terms of the quality of the film, uh, the acting. Uh, of course, the book was written by a veteran of World War I, uh, Eric uh, Remarque. He was, he was a veteran of World War I. He was in those trenches, so he knows what he's talking about. And so, you know, that and the screenplay, very, very powerful. Um, the question is, um, and, and this one, the 2022, is going to win or has won, you may follow it more closely than me, uh, uh, an, an Academy Award uh, or multiple Academy Awards for the quality of it. Well, it's, it's nominated. We'll have to see what 
what it actually wins, but it has won a number of international awards. Yeah, there's no question about that. Um, it, it it'll at a minimum, I'm sure it's going to win the international film Oscar. Um, that one, it, it's it, it's a clear favorite to to be the winner on. Did, did, were you troubled by the fact that it was made by the Germans about the Germans? Mind you, the book was written by a German. You know? No, I wasn't troubled at all. Um, you know, one of my all-time favorite war movies. Did you ever see a movie called The Boot, The Boat, about das the boat, submarine? Das, das Boat, yeah. Das Boat, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's um, that's an incredible film, and uh, made made by the Germans about warfare than being in a submarine. Um, no, I mean. Uh, I mean, you could have done a similar movie from, from the French side, but um, but it was a German author, and and Germany, you know, had the ability to uh, you had, you could at least understand why they felt they had the military might to to, to win. But what was what's was what's so sad is that. Once it became clear that it was a no-win situation, nobody back in in terms of political power, you know, was was willing to to basically say time out. We we really need to to bring this to a halt, and and do so in a little more honorable way before before it got to the point of where it was with with the armistice, which which only helped um, with, lead us to World War II. I mean that the, the terms were so one-sided um that it wasn't necessarily a hitler though that you could have had a world war ii even without hitler based on those terms yeah and that's the problem and there are many problems about war but the problem about war is uh, if you don't have an end game in mind if you don't have a an exit strategy uh, it tends to go on way way longer i mean world war one was supposed to be over in a month huh? <laughs> It was, right. it was over 37 million people later, and it was three years. And it required the U.S. to come in. If we hadn't come in, it would have gone on longer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was what, what was motivating the, 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 the German fella. I mean, you know, there was, was, new, was new, new troops, fresh blood. Um, I mean, he could see where it was going. Yeah. Um, it was just going to get uglier okay. and more death. Pretty ugly, and and the the rule about uh, it goes on forever if you don't have an exit strategy. That's that seems to be the case in uh, in in Ukraine, and as it was the case in Vietnam, and in other wars you can think of. Right. Um, so I mean, war has to be looked at more scientifically and avoided. Uh, you know, I think I think the assuming that uh, Ukraine comes out on the side of Ukraine. That may be the end of, uh, you know, invasion of of your neighbor kind of war. You can only hope. We can only hope. So what? What? Uh, I mean, I, I've seen reviews of this movie, this one, and for that matter, the 1931, because they, they seem to be reviewed together. Well, you know, you you always you always hear the reviewer talk about the comparison between the two, um, and there are some very good comparison videos showing. This event in the 1930 movie, as against the same event in the in the 2022 movies, interesting. On the same screen at the same time, you see these right. comparisons. But so uh, a lot of these uh, reviews have been ten plus, <laughs> and they they run out of numbers when they try to review the movie. What's your review, Steve? No, it it, it uh, yeah this this one. You've asked me in each one of these, but this is the one that does get the 10. Um, they both get the 10 um, for different, for little, little different reasons, but the, the quality is, is, is just absolutely superb. We got to learn from movies because we know that when other people watch them, it changes the, their sensibilities about the way they think about the world. You can, um, you know, you, you can teach people to be violent in a movie. And a lot of our American movies do that right now on Netflix right. and Prime. Uh, or you can teach them that violence is not so good. And the message here for both of these movies is a, 
a really, really important message that violence is bad for you and war is bad for you. And, and so I, I would also give it a 10. If I could give it more, I would. Right. Right. So thank you. Agreed. Steve. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thanks for coming around. Uh, thanks for this discussion. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks for more. Here okay. Goodman's Garage. I love the name of that. Goodman's Garage. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.